Welcome to my site code diaries, your ultimate guide to digital experience excellence. You are a go to channel for all the things in site code and .net. I am your host Jitendra Ghanekar. I am in site code technology MVP 2024. This is the video from site code MVC website creation demo. This is the last video of this uh, series. If you have not watched uh, our previous video, I will recommend to watch the previous video. And those videos are uh, on the playlist given uh, given in the description as well as the top i button. Before proceed ahead, I will request you to subscribe to the channel if you are already not subscribed, and click on a bell icon to get a latest update. Also, if you like the video, then do share this video with others, your your colleagues, and your friends. Okay, this is a very sh short video uh, uh, about the uh, about the uh, the first thing which we have I have spoken on in this series that is when you publish the things from your project uh, project you should not be you should not be overwriting the uh, the site core platform DLL. So we are going to see more details about it in this video. So setting up publishing folder so so if you remember uh, i have told you that when you publish it there are few things which you should be doing it on your project so we are discussing about those things in this uh, slide so if you see the your site code instance you will have in the site code you have a site code vanilla dll so when you when once you install the site code the uh, it is basically a .NET website. So in the bin folder, you will see there are many uh, web, uh, many DLLs which are reference to the site code. Okay, and the other things are also dependencies are also there. Okay, so we will have the bin blank instance. You have seen this, uh, some uh, site code vanilla DLLs. Then you have a site code configurations, basic configurations, default configurations of site code, and then you have the required CSS and other things pages, all the things. Okay. Now when you set up your project solution. You also refer your site for uh, DLLs, right? In from using the NUG. If you remember our project setup, we have done that. Okay. So once you do that, the similar DLLs will come in your project and also your uh, project DLL. So you will have a project DLLs and dependency in your project solution. Okay. Then you will have your own project configuration, like site configuration, which we have done in one of the video. Okay. So those kind of a uh, uh, configuration will be there. Those are related to project configuration, and then you have project CSS views, etc. Okay. Now, ideally, what should happen? Okay, when you build a project solution and you will publish it, uh, then you will find that all those dependencies. Uh, it's basically a site core. Uh, uh, sorry, it is basically a .NET solution, right? So, when you build it, when you publish it, the dependency DLLs will also will get published, right? So if you are using the site core as you are giving the reference of site core, site core DLLs also will get published. Okay, so when you publish it, your project so solution it will have the, all those uh, configurations also. So if you directly publish the uh, this project on your site core instance, then it is high chances that your site core vanilla DLLs will get override by your project solution DLLs. Okay. So there might let's say let's take an example. There might be sitecore.mvc DLL which will get override on the in your sitecore vanilla. It's all okay till the time the versions are the same. Okay, but in case there is a, some mismatch of a version, then it will create a problems. Okay, especially the URL uh, DLLs like you can solve. Okay, so it might be the case and you are you are updating via the new gate. So it might be that different versions are getting updated. So this is not a right practice to do. Okay. Another thing is a vanilla configuration. I do there is there is there are cases where you need to change the configuration. Okay. But you should not be directly should not be directly changing the vanilla configuration like those direct files. It should be done via the patch so that when when you are going to upgrade it, it's really simple easy to separate out your project configuration. So you can do this, but it has to be done via the patch configuration and obviously you can do the site for vanilla CSS and pages you can change make changes now in your site code instance it's not the case that only your project is 
getting deployed okay sitecon instance can have a multiple projects also so there might be some dependency or maybe some issue okay ideally ideally or you can say this has to be there that your project should refer the same dlls what is there in the site for instance to avoid the major problem while developing or while deploying you should avoid the overriding your dlls and configuration over the vanilla uh, configuration okay so so what should happen is the all the things should be there and only project related changes you should be deploying to the site for instance that take uh, that care you have to take and how you can do that that we will be going to discuss another thing is web.config and the global.axis so uh, uh, every your every project will have if you are using a feature there are might be take uh, you, if you are using the helix there might be hundreds of projects also in your uh, solution so you every project will might have the web.config okay and that might be a blank config and if you see a site for instance that is having the all the configuration if you override your web.config and global.access or the uh, site code web config it might be happen that your site code instance may not work so you should not be overriding the web.config low and global.axx yes there might be a case that where you want to customize the global.axx that can be done considering whatever the current uh, site code instance is handling vanilla instance handling, that you should include in the global axx so this is this is how you should have been uh, should uh, to say you should configure your project okay so whenever you are making a project solution make sure that you are not overriding the platform dlls now what is platform dll as i said your site code instance have this vanilla instance and you can have a multiple projects so but the platform is site code so all the things which are related to this site code will come as a you can say as a site code platform instance there might be some cases where you have a site code platform team separate and your project team separate so site code platform Form team basically handles all the things which are related to Sitecore, even the Sitecore customization. Whereas project team will handle the, the, the project specific changes. Okay, that can happen. Okay, so this this you should be taking care of this. Now, how we can do this? Okay, to do this, what we should be doing? Reference property. So if you see your project so you can your dll you can select your dlls your your platform dlls and right click and you go to the properties you will have this property copy local ideal uh, i mean it's by default it is true so you have to make it as a false so if you see here copy local indicates whether the reference will be copied to the output directory so when we publish it is basically going in the output directory so we don't want this dll so set up all those reference dll which you are seeing in your references uh, which are which are specific to sitecore and which are available in the sitecore bin folder to false so that those will not come in your publish uh, when you publish it it will not come in your publish for output direct okay this is you have to do it for all the reference dll which are available in the sitecore that is the first thing second thing is your global dot access and web dot config so when you select your global dot access or web dot config and you see the property there are two things build action and copy to output directory uh, you have to make build to action none and the copy to output directory as a do not copy so this will make sure that your global dot access and web dot config are not uh, de uh, getting deployed so when make sure whenever you are doing any changes in this you should be having some mechanism where you can uh, we can patch those configuration in your site okay so these are the very important uh, things okay let's now go to our solution and see when we does that how does your publishing order looks like okay, so i have opened my uh, website solution okay which we was working in this uh, uh, video series okay so now what i done is if you see this any of this dla which are referred okay if i go to the properties i've said copy local as false okay i do not want to deploy all those things but i don't have any references of those i just want a project dll so i made it false if you see here okay and then i do not want the web.conf should get overrides okay 
So I do not want web.config to get overwrite. So if you select the web.config and property, you will see that copy to directory is do not copy and real action is null. Similarly, I have the global.axx. If I see the properties, here also I set up the same thing. Now I am going to publish this. Okay. So if you have seen in the all other videos, all the things, all the DLLs were coming when we publishing it and it is only we are manually copying two DLLs, right? And the views also. So now I'm publishing it. Publish. Okay, let me go to my publish folder. Okay, now if you see what is happened, app config, the custom configuration which I have added that have come. Then win file, this is C demo website and MSD demo uh, website has come. Content has come. Sidecore package folder was there, so that has come. And the views has come. So there is no web.config, no uh, global.exx and no other sidecore related DLS. So this is we should be doing it when before publishing the your uh, sidecore application on your website folder. Alright, this was the last video of this series and we have completed the complete series of sidecore and we see demo website creation if you follow those all those 10 video all these 10 videos you will able to work on the uh, uh, you will able to create a sidecore uh, website sidecore mvc website if you are following your sidecore tutorial series then we have all the concept of sidecore and i think if you are going to all those videos and this uh, plus this 10 videos then i think you are you will you are in the good position to work on the sidecore mvc project at least so you can work on sidecore mvc project after going through all these videos the sidecore tutorial series videos if you this was the most asked for series so if you like this series please click on a like button and do share this video this series with the uh, with your friends and colleagues do provide your feedback via the comment if you want anything to cover in this series and which i missed let me know i will try to cover that also but please provide your comment and uh, if you are new to the channel please click on a subscribe button and click on the that notification bell to get a latest update Thank you. Thanks for watching.